Welcome back, everyone, to the State of the Nation. Well, the economy is on the tail end of a cycle. No one knows how things might turn out to be right now. We have a vague idea. Whilst we have an issue at hand, guess what? We also have an opportunity. Now, we need to realize one thing. This current crisis we are undergoing right now, well, whether we like it or not, we got to weather it down. Why? Because honestly, there is no immediate solution to this crisis right now. People understand there's no quick fix. You can't go into a revolution tomorrow uh, and solve that problem. We, what, what we have is a dollar crisis. No? Yeah. We have a balance of payment crisis. So we need short term foreign cu currency. The, it cannot uh, be uh, uh, generated through export increase. It cannot be generated through foreign investments and it cannot be generated through tourism in the short term, right? So short term you have to borrow. So as I have said many times, we've got to think beyond. While it is too late for this current crisis to be salvaged with immediate solutions, our goal should be that we do not face this same problem in 2023, 2024 and beyond. As much as it's enticing to say that this uh, liberally floated idea of going to the IMF is sorting things out for us, that is not going to be the case. There are two things liberal economic pundits in Colombo are saying regarding the IMF. One is that it will bring us financial discipline. The financial discipline we did not have 16 times when we were with the IMF. They will get it on the 17th time. I am not a keen uh, advocate of IMF or any kind of external uh, uh, entity coming into Sri Lanka and trying to look at managing Sri Lanka's mm. national balance sheet because it's unique to Sri Lanka. There is no cut and paste model which IMF generally does when I have gone through many of their yeah. uh, papers and you find it's identical. If from 1965 you look at the, uh, the structure adjustment process and the, and the various other documents they have uh, come up with. Uh, it's the same, identical. So if you have gone 16 times, they have failed and not got the results, well, why should why you go again? I mean, they, unless someone is absolutely brain dead to do this, then you would go again. I mean, there is no need because we have done most of the changes in the last two years. Then the second idea they say why we need to go to the IMF is basically it's going to bring in investor confidence. That argument would have been accurate if we lived in the 80s or the 90s. Why? At that time, investors listened to well-established financial organizations and took their advice. But right now, the business and investor portfolios around the world has changed drastically. Nowadays, many startups and small businesses are uh, trying to make a buck. They're trying to invest in various countries. They're not interested in getting advice from these age-old financial institutions. They're more or less uh, depending uh, and trusting their resources and their sources. They are more or less, uh, we'll look into two critical things or three. Can I make a profit? Is my money safe? And how easy for me to start my business? And to answer the latter two questions, when they do the necessary research about Sri Lanka's uh, financial history and finds out that the, this nation has been with the IMF 16 times and has failed to fix its problems, they are very much going to take their money elsewhere. Because the so-called confidence will never come to fruition. The IMF said the same thing about countries like Argentina, Burkina Faso, Kenya, and there's a whole list of countries. Look at their investor portfolio right now. In Argentina, it's abysmal. And there is real-time protest occurring right now. Despite fake economists here in Colombo who sits in air-conditioned rooms saying everything was sorted in four months in Argentina. Rata Gudawa, that's what they said. You're right. Last week we showed you how that's a big fat lie. Now to understand what we really need to do right now and where we need to aim uh, in sorting our economic problems. I'm now joined by Dr. Hapa, a director and senior um, trainer at the Economic uh, training and information services uh, here in uh, Sri Lanka. Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, good to see you once again. Well, um, Doctor, unfortunately, Sri Lanka's condition is not that good. We are clearly at a tail end of uh, an economic cycle, creating many issues for this nation. Yet, 
we are finding it very difficult to even get the basics right now. As an economist, what are the solutions you see that Sri Lanka needs to adhere to and that we are not doing it right now? Well, in a nutshell, we are not planning for the long term. Most of the policies are responses to the current predicament, which of course is very pressing and needs to be addressed, but we are actually not thinking about the long term. And this has been a recurrent theme for Sri Lanka over the last 25 to 30 years, certainly my involvement with Sri Lanka, I've seen the same thing over and over again, that the long term has been completely neglected. That is very true. Um, Doctor, now IMF is something that liberal uh, bending economists keeps floating as a silver bullet to this problem. In your opinion, um, are you on the same page? Well, the policies recommended by the IMF can help over the short term because actually it doesn't matter whether it's IMF or anyone else, there will have to be certain uh, restrictions on the budget deficit, so we'll have to contract the budget deficit. We'll certainly have to raise interest rates because inflation is rising. And we'll have to be far more prudent in terms of credit expansion. Now, Having said that, again, what I go back to is the long term. You know, uh, This is only there to deal with the short term problems, but will not address the longer term issues, which we still need to look at. Perfect sense. Uh, doctor, in your opinion, what are the novel economic approaches that Sri Lanka must look at? Uh, because it is very evident we need financial discipline. We need to do away with this handout culture and reduce uh, the poverty gap. So at a time like this, where there's an opportunity, like I say, always say, to begin anew, how should Sri Lanka approach its economic problems right now? Well, I think there's actually no other choice but export-oriented manufacturing. And there, it's just giving the right incentives and support structures and letting the entrepreneurs do the rest. Uh, essentially, government shouldn't meddle too much, but should actually facilitate export-oriented manufacturing. This is something all successful East Asian countries have done in the past and continue to do at present. Not just the East Asian, look at the Europeans, they're all doing the same thing. They do that, but preach something else. They tell other people, no, no, you shouldn't interfere, you should let the market work, etc., etc. But actually, there are no totally free market economies. They're all aggressively interventionist. The trick is to convince someone else to do the wrong thing by not intervening. Absolutely true. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Howard Nicholas, Director and Senior Trainer at the Economic Training and Information Services, Lanka. Let's take a short commercial break. On the other side, we'll speak to a good friend of Sri Lanka, still keeping the torch burning to tell the truth about this nation. Be right back.